basically the stomach is bathed in, in acid all, pretty much all the time. And it, you don't feel any pain when you have acid in your stomach, but you'll feel pain when the acid that's na naturally there goes in the wrong place. Welcome to the Doctor's Pharmacy. I'm Dr. Mark Hyman. That's pharmacy with an F, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, a place for conversations that matter. And if you've ever suffered from heartburn or reflux, this podcast should matter to you because it's a special episode of the podcast called House Call about how we deal with things differently in functional medicine. And today's guest is none other than Dr. Todd Lapine, who's my colleague and good friend for over 25 years, both at Kenya Ranch and at the Ultra Wellness Center. He's a leading educator and doctor in the field of functional medicine, teaches all over the place, but mostly on Zoom now. <laughs> and he is just one of those guys who is deeply thoughtful, understands things in ways that most people don't. And uh, he's the doctor's doctor here. And I'm so excited to have Dr. Todd Lapine again on the doctor's pharmacy talking about heartburn. So welcome, Todd. Thank you, Mark. All right, so let's get right into it. Tell us about how common heartburn is. What is it? What is reflux and how is it different from heartburn? And, and, and just sort of give us a little background on this problem because I think it's a big issue for people and it's you know the source of a lot of suffering and it's also the source of billions of dollars in revenue for the drug companies because yeah. I think these drugs are the third category uh, in terms of leading sales of all drugs after the, uh, statin drugs and antidepressants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I venture to say that most people have experienced heartburn. It's a very common condition. Mm. You know, if you overeat, mm. uh, if you eat too late, if you eat certain foods, I mean, I've experienced heartburn. Yep. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually very fortunate. I have like a cast iron stomach. I can literally eat anything. <laughs> I really can. I, unlike my father. But you can give yourself heartburn. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I can give myself. And I've, I've, ex, I've experienced heartburn. So I, I know what it's like. And uh, for some people, it's it's a chronic problem. It's it's really uh, something that they experience all the time. And the, the, the big thing about heartburn is that most of the time, it's not about too much acid. That's sort of, I think, the take-home message for people. And I always tell people that your body needs and wants to have acid in the stomach. Acid helps you to break down your food. Uh, there's a rare condition, which uh, I learned about in medical school, called Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Remember that, Mark? Oh, I do. Yeah, right. Hyper have, you, have you ever seen it? Have you ever seen it? <laughs> uh, only in the textbook. Exactly. I think I've seen it once. So it's a condition in which your body actually uh, produces uh, too much uh, acid. acid. And they, you know, they, you know, what do doctors used to do? They used to cut the vagus nerve and they used to do all kinds of surgeries for heartburn and oh, reflux yeah. and all. Oh, yeah. All to kinds treat of, ulcers. They oh, used to uh, cut your nerve to your stomach <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then they realized it was a bacteria. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So we'll talk. We'll talk about the the bacteria causing some uh, cases of heartburn. So, in heartburn is is this usually a benign condition, um, and it's oftentimes lifestyle related, um, and you can treat it, you know, periodically with you know as needed, you know, baking soda or alka seltzer or tums if it's mild. Mm. But if you're having heartburn all the time, the first thing you need to do is say, well, what's driving this? Um, and again, it's not, not necessarily stomach acid. In fact, there are a fair number of people who actually have their heartburn because of lack of stomach acid. Yes. Um, and you can actually do some testing for uh, lack of stomach acid. If, if it's significant, you can actually do testing uh, for gastrin levels. So, um, and I actually oftentimes will do this on my patients uh, who are on the, uh, the proton pump inhibitors. So gastrin is produced by the body to tell the body to produce more acid. So if you're taking these heartburn medications, for a, a long period of time. And if you're escalating, you start on a low dose and you go to a moderate yeah. dose and you go to a your high dose, level. you're really dropping your stomach acids. Your body says, hey, guess what? We need to make more stomach acid. So it produces a lot more gastrin. And then what happens is because you have so much gastrin, you go off of the medication, your body now now starts pumping out lots of acid. And then guess what? You're going to get Withdrawal oh my symptoms. gosh, Todd, this is, this is the biggest scam ever. Because exactly. <laughs> basically, they create a drug that makes you addicted to it you treat a condition which is pretty benign. When you try to stop the drug, it come back with a vengeance. Yes. And so you get hooked on the drugs. Well, I have to take it because as soon as I stop it, I get worse. And exactly. I get worse than I was before I took it. Yeah. And a, a, a lot of the psychiatric drugs are like that too. A lot yeah. of, the, a lot of the, uh, the antidepressant and the anxiolytics, the same thing is your body gets into a different state. And then if you go off of them too quickly or you're not being supervised, 
you, you're, you get these rebound symptoms and it's much, much worse. So these chronic conditions like heartburn or uh, depression or anxiety, when you use a pharmacologic approach, you, you know, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire yeah. you, and, you, and you become, you know, like I said, there's, there's no money in, in dead people and there's no money in healthy people, but there's a lot of money in sick people. Yeah, it was so funny. You know, I, I, I think of this, this condition and, um, and we, we, we say it's, it's, uh, it's too much stomach acid, but, uh, you know, in, in fact, it's a lifestyle problem. And yeah. there's many other factors and causes from a functional medicine perspective we look at. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we even come up with new names for conditions that are pretty benign, like gastroesophageal reflux disease. That was a new thing. Like when I was in medical school, they didn't have that. It was called heartburn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, then, and then they came up with this disease because they found a drug to treat it. Yep. Now, I, I don't know about you, but we were in medical school probably about the same time, and, and these drugs came on the market. And I remember the drug reps would show up and say, look, these are very powerful drugs. Right. No patient should take them for any longer than six weeks. They're used to treat ulcers, they're very effective, but they are dangerous to take a long time because they suppress stomach acid, which has all sorts of adverse consequences. Yeah. And then that just went, to the wind, yeah. and now people are on them for decades. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can remember exactly when they first came out. There was a lot of warning in, in, in short-term use, and what we also did is we used them in the uh, hospital. Uh, people who are hospitalized, they would, can, get, can get a thing called stress ulcers, um, and that can then in turn um, lead to uh, bleeding and aspiration pneumonia and a whole bunch of different things. And there were some early studies showing that it can decrease the risk of stress ulcers and aspiration pneumonia. So these were sort of high. High, high, high potential risk uh, medications that should only be used for a defined period of time. And then it sort of went into this chronic long-term use because they figured, oh, we can make a lot of money on this. Yeah. I mean, in traditional medicine, it's like, okay, you have heartburn, reflux. This is a chronic condition. Take this drug. And there's no thinking about why they have it. Yeah. You know, they might be saying, oh, raise the head of your bed. You know, you might say, don't eat certain foods like spicy foods or fried foods or citrus or tomato-based foods. That can sometimes help. But, but there's no real thinking about that's being a solvable problem. Right. And and sometimes there's things like a hiatal hernia or a structural problem. Right. And you can get a, a surgical procedure to fix that. But that's a very small group yeah. of people who have this, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think I think from a functional medicine perspective, we we look at this very differently. Um, Absolutely. We don't just say, oh, it's a low stomach acid, it's too much stomach acid, take this drug to suppress the acid and you'll be fine. We go, wait a minute, first of all, uh there are many causes. And if you treat the cause, you don't have to worry about taking the drugs. And second, these drugs are not benign. I mean, yeah. it'd be one thing to say, oh, it's like vitamin C, just take a little vitamin C, it's fine. These drugs have serious side effects that we've now uncovered. So talk about some of the serious side effects that come as a consequence of these acid-blocking drugs. And I'm just going to name them, people know what they are. They're acid effects, Nexium, Protonix, Peps, Prevacid, yeah. Prilosec. These are the, the, did I forget any? There's a few more probably. <laughs> I don't know how many of those all the time. But these are the common ones that people take. You can get them over the counter in your drugstore. Yep. And, and they're just, it's a free-for-all now. So. Yeah. Tell us about why we should be concerned about these drugs. Right. So these medications uh, actually have long-term consequences. So it's well known uh, now in the literature, and it's if doctors spend their time like learning what's what's the latest literature, is that they're associated long-term use with uh, increase in food allergies, problems with vitamin and mineral absorption, specifically B12, problems with calcium, so you can develop increased risk for osteoporosis. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So they have long-term, uh, leaky gut is another leaky thing that they, they, they tie in with. Absolutely. Pneumonia. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and one of the things that's so striking to me is one of the most common side effects is you develop irritable bowel and bacterial overgrowth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so literally you swap one GI problem for another GI problem. Exactly. It's right. like it's like adding gasoline to the fire. It really it it truly and truly is. And and they're not cheap. And the other thing I you know, I don't I don't actually have a television set, so I don't necessarily see uh ads unless I'm over at somebody's house or I'm in an airport watching TV waiting for a flight. Mm -hmm. um, but they have ads where, you know, somebody is like, you know, overweight and they've just, you know, eaten a lot of a lot of food and then they're having heart. Have a so, sausage and the peppers. Oh, don't worry. Exactly. Just take this drug. Exactly. So you can and, and right. And, that, and that's the mindset that people have is that you just keep keep doing what you're doing that's giving you the problem and take this to suppress the symptoms. They should have like a little pill dispenser at McDonald's, you know, so you yeah, go yeah. in, you know. Yeah. And 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 and, and and literally, you know, there there are some really good, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, integrative uh, and functional medicine, gastrointestinal doctor like Jerry Mullen, who we, we talked about, who's written a textbook on uh, integrative gastroenterology. Uh, but most of the, of, the, of the GI doctors, in my opinion, um, are handing out these uh, acid blocking medications pretty much like Pez candy. Oh, my God. And it's, it, you go to them and you're going to get it. Well, you it, can get it now on your own. You go to the grocery store yeah, or the pharmacy. Yeah, but even, and... at, even at the higher, at the, yeah, they, they actually, you're right, because now they're actually at low do, lower doses, they're over the counter, which yeah. is, in my opinion, it really shouldn't, shouldn't even no, be there. No, it's, it's a serious drug. Absolutely, exactly. So there's all yeah. these consequences. So, so from a functional medicine perspective, one, you know, it, it's it's not safe to take these medications long term. No. Two, uh, you know, the problem isn't really dealt with. And three, there are better approaches to this. So, what is the functional medicine view of reflux? What well, are the, the causes? Well, the, well, the functional, you know, obviously, you first look at look at the foods that you're eating because certain people will start reacting to certain foods. So, so for some people, it may be chocolate. Uh, it may be alcohol, maybe mm. foods that are citrus or tomato-based foods mm. or spicy foods. Mm. So you want to sort of like, you know, eliminate some of the uh, peppermint. Coffee, pe I hate to say. Yeah, cop <laughs> well, co coffee, I think, um, uh, in my opinion, I've seen more people with gastritis, especially higher levels of coffee. Um, and, you know, a lot of these medications or not these, uh, these foods can actually affect the lower esophageal sphincter tone, which is the muscle that keeps the stomach contents mm. closed. Mm. So you want to have that 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 muscle between the food pipe and the stomach be tight. Uh, mm. And if you're overweight uh, or if you have these certain foods which relax that muscle, then the stomach contents can go upward. And the lining of the esophagus is more sensitive to pain because the, the, basically the stomach is bathed in, in acid all, pretty much all the time. And it you don't feel any pain when you have acid in your stomach, but you'll feel pain when the acid that's na naturally there goes in the wrong place. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's, that's really the I think the the, the key thing, uh, and and understanding that that it's not an acid problem; it's really uh, related to the balance of where the acid should be uh, at the at the proper. Yeah, time. sometimes if you're overweight and you got a big gut, you yeah, know, that can you're pushing push things up. You're pregnant. You know, you're pregnant. pregnant you know, I mean, it's, it's it's almost I would say it's almost normal to have some uh, heartburn when you're pregnant because yeah. you've got this you get this this you know <laughs> this baby <laughs> this food baby if you will uh, you know uh, pushing yeah. up on the, on the so, diaphragm. So there's a lot of things. I see magnesium deficiency. I see problems with food sensitivities like gluten causing reflux. I see problems with zinc deficiency. Zinc deficiency. I see problems with, you know also with a bacteria that's common in in ulcers, but I think also plays a role in some cases of heartburn and reflux. Yeah, call it H pylori. Yeah, yeah. So that's talk a, about what the, what is this bug and why is it connected to these problems? Well, it's it's really interesting. H so H pylori uh, for a long time uh, we didn't really know what caused stomach ulcers, mm. and stomach ulcers are different than heartburn, but you can get very similar symptoms uh, to it. Uh, you, stomach ulcers can cause bleeding, and actually over time, in some uh, uh, susceptible individuals, uh, H pylori can actually actually cause gastric cancer. So, yeah. and so not everybody who has H. pylori uh, uh, actually has symptoms, but there are some individuals where it can. And uh, it's probably related to, you know, a genetic component to it. Uh, and you can test for H. pylori through stool testing. You can do it through uh, antibody testing. Breath testing. Uh, and, breath te and also breath testing, exactly. Um, and if you have it, you treat it is, is the best uh, thing to do. And it's an, it's, it's an interesting thing because there are some literature saying that in some individuals, having H. pylori can actually be protective against uh, allergies and asthma. Yeah. And for some people, it's not. So it's, it's not like it's, one- It's tricky. It's, it's tricky. A tri yeah, exactly. It's, it's tricky, a but it's super common. And I, I remember many patients I've had who've had reflux, not ulcers, but who we find H. pylori and we treat it and they get better. Absolutely. So I think you have to treat everybody as an individual and see, but this is a bacteria that uh, people saw in the gut was lining these ulcers and doctors thought it was just incidental, right. not relevant. But it turned out that this guy, Barry Marshall, right. who was a doctor in Australia, said maybe these are not just a coincidence yeah. or, or hanging around. Maybe they're the cause. And they thought he was a kook. Exactly. Kook. And so he decided, like, to, <laughs> he decided to drink a whole beaker of this bacteria, <laughs> give himself an ulcer, and then have his partner scope him. And then take antibiotics, kill the bacteria, cure the ulcer, uh, and end up winning the Nobel Prize. Right. <laughs> so he this. changed the paradigm. He changed the paradigm. Because it used to be stress and emotional issues yeah. and all these things that cause ulcers. And now it's a bacteria. So I, th I think we have to sort of understand that, that reflux is, is like you said, not just caused by food, but it can be caused by uh, other, other factors, stress, being overweight, being pregnant, bacteria, um, food sensitivities. And I think, I think it's a very specific method we use in functional medicine to help restore gut function. And I can't Absolutely. tell you 
how many people just completely get rid of, rid of heartburn and reflux almost overnight by just understanding how to how to fix the problem. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Hyman. Thanks for tuning into The Doctor's Pharmacy. I hope you're loving this podcast. It's one of my favorite things to do and introducing you to all the experts that I know and I love and that I've learned so much from. And I wanna tell you about something else I'm doing, which is called Mark's Picks. It's my weekly newsletter. And in it, I share my favorite stuff from foods to supplements to gadgets to tools to enhance your health. It's all the cool stuff that I use and that my team uses to optimize and enhance our health. And I'd love you to sign up for the weekly newsletter. I'll only send it to you once a week on Fridays. Nothing else, I promise. And all you have to do is go to drhyman.com forward slash picks to sign up. That's drhyman.com forward slash picks, P-I-C-K-S, and sign up for the newsletter and I'll share with you my favorite stuff that I use to enhance my health and get healthier and better and live younger longer. Now back to this week's episode. What do we um, do in these patients? Give me a case of a patient you've had with reflux. I have a, a great case. Uh, is a patient who came in to see me and the patient's main symptoms was neuropathy. So neuropathy is painful nerve uh, sensations, uh, in, usually in the extremities, in the legs uh, mm, uh, or mm. the uh, the arms. So the patient came in with neuropathy and was, be, I think if I remember correctly, was being treated with gabapentin. Mm. And uh, when I actually started diving into the history, which, you know, we that's what, one of the things that we do is we sort of play detective and ask a lot of questions and get the, the timeline of what started when and how and what were you doing and what were you taking, what were you eating and all that, all those kinds of things. And uh, that's, uh, to me, the fun part of, of this, because it's like solving a, a, a murder mystery. It's mm. like, okay, I, you know, who done it? <laughs> you know, who did it? And, so and being a functional medicine doctor is being a medical detective. Exactly, a medical detective. So in, in this particular case, the, the gentleman had um, uh, high blood pressure hmm. and was on a medication called a calcium channel blocker. Uh, so that was the first thing in my mind. So for people that don't know about calcium channel blockers, they block calcium channels to lower blood pressure in the body. Well, another side effect is, guess what? They lower esophageal sphincter tone. So and there's a variety of different calcium channel blockers. There's Norvaskin, Diltiazem, and Verapamil and such. So and relax that muscle that's keeping the food in your stomach and not going and they're, up And they're esophagus. actually, they, it, that's like a low-hanging fruit. If I have any, anybody who's on a calcium channel blocker and they have heartburn, I get them off the calcium mm -hmm. channel blocker. Okay, so that was the first thing. And then he was also on um, a uh, medication for high cholesterol. And that's another bugaboo of mine because the statin medications are actually associated with neuropathy. Mm. Uh, and you've got to treat about 500 patients with an elevated cholesterol to prevent one heart attack. So yeah. 499 patients don't benefit, no benefit right. by the statins. And there's a significant side effects in some people with- And, and the reason with, it causes this nerve damage is the nerve sheets are covered by cholesterol. Yeah. Like, and so if you shut down cholesterol production, you can't I love cholesterol. Make Cholesterol is a great molecule. You know, it is. It, right, heart disease is, is not about cholesterol. It's about inflammation. Yeah. I tell patients, you want cholesterol. It's, it, it's the building block of all your hormones and your, your myelin sheets. But, but people need the right kind of cholesterol. Yeah. Too. And they yeah. can get screwed up Yeah, they're, right. There's, a nuance, <clears throat> so, there's nuances to it too. But, uh, but cholesterol yeah. is, is, a, is a good molecule in the yeah. body. It's the building block of lots of things. So, so he was on these, these two medications. And you know he was the kind of guy who was a hardworking guy. He would oftentimes skip lunch. Uh, he would uh, then have late dinners, uh, overeat because he was so hungry, and then he developed heartburn. So guess what the doctors did? They put him on a PPI. So then he came in to see me, and he was um, having a lot of GI symptoms. He was having the neuropathy symptoms. Um, so I did a, a workup on him, and I checked his, uh, his vitamin B12. And in addition to his vitamin B12, I also checked methylmalonic acid, which is a precursor uh, uh, molecule that when you have B12 deficiency, you'll get elevations of methylmalonic acid even before you get B12 deficiency. And he had been on it so long that he actually had B12 deficiency. And guess what? No one ever checked his B12. Yeah. So what he you was, said it's super important. One of the main side effects of these drugs is they shut down B12 absorption because yes. you need acid. Exactly. <clears throat> you need acid. Yeah. So that shuts down B12 absorption. Yes. And what you're saying is this patient got B12 deficient because of the drug right. that caused the nerve damage because B12 is necessary for proper nerve function. Correct. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. And this was, this was a, I called this case, you know, atrogenica imperfecta. So it's, it was, it was doctor induced illness. I mean, literally the doctors, by giving him the medications inappropriately without thinking, actually caused the disease. Yeah. I right. mean, they're, they're doing what they were trained to do, but uh, we're not trained to think about getting the root cause, which is what functional medicine is, is what we do here at the Ultra Wellness yeah. Center in Lenox, Massachusetts. And we do virtual consults. We could see people from anywhere. Yeah. And we're just, 
so grateful to be able to see people with these chronic problems to provide yeah. a pathway for getting better, which uh, they've been struggling to find for often decades. Absolutely. And it, you know, it breaks my heart because after doing this for 30 years, and you've seen the same thing, you know, you see so many patients get better from things that traditional medicine just doesn't work with. Absolutely. And it's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> once no. you, you know, once you know what to do, it's like that joke of the, uh, the guy who had an appendectomy and the doctor sent him a bill for a thousand dollars. And, uh, the guy goes, wow, that's such an expensive operation for such a simple thing to take my appendix out. It's a lot of money for just taking out my appendix. He's like, you're right. Uh, and he sent him a new bill. He says, taking out your appendix, $1 knowing that's what needs to be taken out, $999. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that a functional medicine is like that. It's like, you look like a genius, but it's just the right roadmap. And yeah. the truth is the body is not organized like we thought it was according to all these organs and diseases. It's organized according to systems. And the body is one integrated dynamic system and everything's connected. And so functional medicine really helps us to navigate using that map we call the matrix. And it's, it's so satisfying for us as doctors because we can start to treat people with problems that are often intractable and frustrating yeah. and yet have simple solutions. Exactly. So, and going back to this, the, that particular patient. So in addition, the patient uh, also had prediabetes. So he was overweight. And, you know, he, he, he worked with me. He worked with a nutritionist. Uh, we changed his blood pressure medication. So his lower esophageal sphincter started to work. Um, we, I, I'm trying to remember, I think I actually decreased his statin medication, put him on coenzyme Q10, mm. which also uh, is, a, is in... Uh, uh, vitamin that gets depleted by uh, taking the statin medications and then put them on some uh, uh, vitamin B12. Mm -hmm. And within probably three months, his neuropathy symptoms was about 50% better. He had lost weight. And then by six months, his neuropathy was gone. Mm. His heartburn reflux was gone. And he had lost 25 to 30 pounds and his prediabetes was no longer there. Mm. So it's so simple yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And I, you know, I've seen case after case. Sometimes it's just getting off of gluten and dairy. Sometimes it's just cleaning up their diet a little bit. Sometimes it's giving a little extra magnesium or sometimes it's treating the H. pylori <clears throat> or treating the bacterial or yeast overgrowth in their gut. These things you know, really can have a huge impact. I wrote a textbook chapter years ago for a functional medicine, integrated medicine textbook on reflux. And I was just amazed to see the literature, what you could do and all the treatments that are available from a functional medicine perspective, yeah. that really work. Yep, absolutely. There's a there's a really good um, uh, as a nutritionist I know, uh, Katie Mora, who wrote a nice uh, ebook about uh, heartburn and reflux, uh, yeah. which patients can can get. And uh, it's a sort of a simple uh, guide that you can uh, uh, give to your patients to help them, you know, do it on their own. Because a lot of these things are really sort of once you know what to do, you can you can really uh, yeah. make interventions so totally. so 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 simple. Um, and, and I think, you know, one of the key things is really having a good relationship with a really good functional medicine nutritionist, not a dietitian or not a, you know, a regularly trained uh, nutritionist, because oftentimes their thinking is really skewed. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, they're trained in hospital medicine, uh, and they're about calorie counting and mm -hmm. taking Ensure and, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a functional medicine nutritionist. It's really- Ensure, which is essentially high fructose corn syrup casein from yeah. A2, A1 cows, which is inflammatory, and uh, refined uh, omega-6 vegetable oils, which are super inflammatory. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's not exactly the, health food. Yeah, there's some of these, these, yeah, these uh, you know, yeah, what do you call it? meal meal replacement uh, things, uh, such as uh, insurance, and such are really not necessarily the best uh, way to be getting your calories. It's the last thing I'd be giving a sick person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and as you say, you know, your food is information. Mm -hmm. You know, it, your food talks to your genes, as Jeff Bland has al always said. And getting real food uh, into your body and taking out the bad stuff, mm. the, the, the fake food, the, uh, uh, the toxic food, the Franken food uh, is so important. So, yeah. so important. So uh, what kind of workup would you do for a patient with reflux to see what was going on from a well, functional medicine perspective? Well, uh, you know, to, to some degree, you know, a heartburn patient um, does not need a, a big extensive workup. There are some times when you may refer them and get an EGD uh, and make sure they don't have a hiatal hernia or make sure they don't have- Like a, that's an upper endoscopy, upper endoscopy where they look up, at a yeah. scope down there and look a around. Scope. Yeah, it'll do that. Um, you can, you know, and then you, you can uh, do uh, testing for stomach acid uh, by gastrin levels. Oftentimes, I also combine that with antiparietal cell antibodies. <laughs> Um, and parietal cells are the cells in the body that make stomach acid. And there are 
some people that will actually have autoimmunity so that their body is attacking the, the stomach acid producing cells. Um, so that uh, they're they're not actually having enough uh, stomach acid. So sometimes stomach acid support can be really helpful. Things uh, such as apple cider vinegar, which is a simple sort of home remedy. I've had patients do very well with that. Um, also, uh, betaine HCL is another thing that you can use to support stomach acid. Eventually, the so it's sort of almost counterintuitive. You're giving stomach acid support to people who are traditionally thought to have too much stomach acid. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it is counterintuitive. Exactly. Uh, but in the right patient, it can be very effective. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing, Mark, which is, this is really interesting, and this ties in back in with H. pylori, is mm -hmm. that there are um, some genetic uh, SNPs uh, with the uh, 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 interleukin-1 uh, beta uh, and uh, TNF-alpha. If you have those SNPs and you also have H. pylori, your body downregulates stomach acid production. Yeah. So chronic inflammation actually can, it, 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 with uh, H. pylori, can actually downregulate stomach acid. Mm. So, so, so basically, we tell people the basic stuff, right? We look at, we look at, we might look at stool testing, food allergy testing. We might look at H. pylori. We'll look at their vitamin levels, zinc, which gets malabsorbed, magnesium. We'll look at their B12 levels or methylmonic acid. So we will get a really good sense of what's going on with this patient, yep. like you did with yours. Uh, and then we'll give them some basic lifestyle recommendations, which are not uncommon even in traditional medicine, right? Avoid fried foods, spicy foods, tomato-based foods, citrus foods, too much coffee, chocolate, um, certain spicy foods. So the, all that can be helpful for some patients. We'll tell them to stop smoking. We'll tell them to stop eating late. We'll tell them to raise the head of their bed. Yep. All that's great advice. Uh, but to, to get to the root cause, we have to deal with these other factors. And often you can't just stop the acid blocking medication because yep. you'll get this rebound effect that we talked about absolutely so you really have to taper it down right yeah exactly that that that, that is definitely <clears throat> something that you do and you do that sort of slowly um mm -hmm. you, you know if they're on like a you know 80 milligram dose you may actually then go to 80 one day 40 the next day and then gradually decrease it and then as you do that you can then go to a lower uh maybe an h2 blocker yeah and then transition to an H2 block or add in some things like uh, DGL yeah. um, and uh, uh, things to uh, aloe for the uh, uh, and aloe and uh, glutamine and uh, um, glutagenics. I oftentimes will use in yeah. patients uh, to help with the um, um, stomach uh, lining. And patients, if they do it slowly, they oftentimes can get off of the uh, proton pump inhibitors. Um, mm -hmm. Again, if they have, and one of the things I actually will do is, is I'll measure gastrin levels. And if they have very high levels of gastrin, then I know it's going to be a slow process mm -hmm. because it takes a while for the body to re-equilibrate. Re yeah. yeah. So it's really powerful. So you can come off these medications off and cut it by, you know, the dose by half once a week over a period of weeks. And you're right. In addition to just stopping the drugs and the dietary things and lifestyle factors, there's a number of products we use that can be very, very helpful. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned a few of them, DGL, which is deglycerized licorice. Yep. And they're like chewable tablets that are yep. like natural Tums that you can take before you eat. Yep. Very, very effective. Yeah. Uh, and what you mentioned also is a combination of glutamine, aloe, and licorice, which also can be extremely helpful. You can take as a powder before you eat every day. And I find when I do that, and maybe a few other supplements that sometimes are effective, or magnesium, a little this, that, people do really, really well. It's yeah. one of those conditions that people just don't have to suffer from. But yeah. they do have to make the dietary and lifestyle changes. It's not just go about eating your sausage and peppers and deep fried food and take your <laughs> pills so you would avoid the symptoms. And that's just a dumb idea. <laughs> yeah, symptom suppression. I mean, that's what that's what um, Sidney Baker uh, talked about for, for years as the, sort of the grandfather of functional medicine is mm -hmm. most medicine nowadays is symptom suppression. It's a blocker, some type of blocker, yeah. an anti-hypertensive, an anti uh, calcium channel blocker. Yeah. It, it's a blocking. And, you know, when you really think about uh, systems biology, um, it's it's like having this big, you know, complicated machine. You just sort of throw this wrench in it yeah. and you just stop it. And then what happens is all of a sudden, you know, it builds up and all of a sudden, you know, it, the, you know, the conveyor belt, you know, the, all the stuff starts backing up. Yeah. And that's what happens when you have these very powerful interventions in very complex systems in the body. Yeah. Uh, we saw that with Viox. Viox is a classic case where uh, Viax was a, a medication was taken off the market like and it was a super used super duper Advil. Super, yeah, super duper Advil, and it worked really well. But in the process of blocking uh, uh, the prostaglandins, we actually caused people to have strokes. And there are some people that exactly right. strokes and heart attacks. So it took it off the market. It took it off the market, and and uh, they unfortunately, you know, a lot of times when pay, when when medications go on the market, 
you know, they're studied for a relatively short period of time. And, you know, what happens when you take the PPIs for a long period of time? If you study the PPIs for six to eight weeks, they're not going to have problems. No. If you take PPIs no, for six blockers. to eight years, yeah. you're going to have problems. <clears throat> right. And that's, and, and I think that's really one of the, uh, the areas where uh, big pharma is really lax because we are not following up these patients long-term on these very powerful medications. Yeah. And then uh, the pH has to be right in your gut for the right bacteria. So if you're shut off the acid and then you have no uh, acid in your small intestine, you're going to get bad bugs growing in there. You're going to get yeast growing in there. So often I find myself having to deal with the consequences yeah. of the drugs in repairing the gut. So not only do they have reflux, but they end up having irritable bowel and SIBO and CIFO, which are these bacterial and yeast overgrowth in the gut. And so you have to fix all that too. So you have to do a cleanup <laughs> crew we're, after yeah, they get on these drugs for a long time. Exactly. We're, we're fixing the iatrogenic induced illness. Yeah. I mean, when you really think about it, there's a lot of the stuff that we see nowadays is, is a lot of, a, a good part of it is related to some of the side effects of the medications. Yeah. And what ha oftentimes happens in, in mainstream medicine now is that you have a side effect of medications. The doctor gives you another drug to counteract that side effect. Mm -hmm. So then you get this polypharmacy. And that's a that's a big dangerous thing, especially in the elderly. Yeah. Uh, these patients come in and they're on you know tons of medications. One of the, one of the things that's, uh, that some of the geriatricians are doing now they're realizing this is they have these patients when they 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 saw like five doctors. Each doctor gave them two medications. Ooh. They're on ten medications. Ooh. They're in the nursing home and they're like semi comatose and almost you know. Uh, 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 on death's door. Yeah. And they, guess what? They get them off of the medications and they and wake, they wake up. up. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I once saw this patient, I did a house call on this woman and she was on 22 different medications. It was just unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Unbelievable. Right. right. So, so I, th I think this is really a great case of um, a disease which is easily treatable with functional medicine that uh, avoids you having to take potentially very harmful drugs that uh, requires a little bit of a different thinking and approach, but that is available pretty easily. And I've, I've written a lot about this, uh, not only the textbook chapter, but I've written a lot of blogs. You can go to drhyman.com and search for reflux or heartburn on the search box, and you'll find a bunch of articles sort of detailing some of these ideas in functional medicine. Um, but I, I just want to emphasize for people who are suffering from this, a lot of this you can fix your own. You don't need to yeah. see the doctor, just follow these guidelines. But if you do, you know, we're at the Ultra Wellness Center here in Lenox, Massachusetts. We've been dealing with this stuff for decades. And collectively, we probably have over 60 or 70 years of experience in functional medicine between all of us mm -hmm. practicing here. And and we can really help people remotely through through Zoom consultations, at whenever, wherever you are in the world. And we really would love you to not suffer. And I think that's really when people say, what's your, what's your life's mission? Really to end needless suffering yeah. <laughs> yeah. through the power of functional medicine to get to the root cause of yeah. disease. Yeah, me yeah, mental and physical suffering, emotional suffering, you know, they all are tied in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, there's the, the suffering that people have with pain, uh, and they're suffering with, uh, you know, the, their day-to-day -day existence. Uh, and when you see enough people, it, it really is, you're absolutely right, it's all about helping people to be alive and well. And yeah. when, when we're healthy, we don't really know we have a body. Yeah. That's, that's a beautiful thing. You shouldn't it's be like, talking to you. You know, you'll, you'll breathe. You don't, you don't have, you know, you're not wheezing. You can move your body. It doesn't hurt. You yeah. go to bed and you actually sleep. And, what amazing. And, and yeah. you move your bowels and you don't think about it. It's that's just right. like it, it, when everything's working, you literally don't know you have a body. It's just yeah. like, it's just there. It just works. It's true. That's a, that's a, what is functional medicine? It's the path to figuring out how to get to know you don't have a body. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, exactly. Well, Todd, thank you so much for joining us on this special episode of House Call for the Doctor's Pharmacy. Again, if you've been suffering from challenges with digestion and reflux and heartburn, uh, or you know anybody, please direct them our way. The Ultra Wellness Center here in Lenox, we take care of people from all over the world and do it all virtually now. If you want to come in, we're happy to see you, but you don't have to. Um, please share this podcast with your friends and family on social media leave a comment, tell us how you've struggled or not and how you've solved your issues with heartburn or anything else. And uh, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and we'll see you next time on The Doctor's Pharmacy. Great, thank you, Mark. <laughs>